So I'm about getting ready to remove the air from the shock. That's the first thing you should do. You can do it once you take it off. I'm going to go ahead and do it uh, with it on. Uh, Fox does warn that, especially with the Evo, which is this once one, this is one of those shocks where it has two chambers. The It's very important to do this very slowly so that you don't get what they call a stuck in position where the chambers don't equalize, don't have time to equalize. So I'm actually going to use my shock pump to bleed it very slowly through the little uh, release valve there. So the other thing is most videos show that they take this off, they bleed it. I already ble uh, bled the, all the air out and then uh, they put it on a vise to remove the, the actual sleeve. I'm going to leave it on the bike and that way I can use the uh, actual mount as, as to hold it in place as I turn it. I put some gloves on to give me better grip. And there it goes. And it's turning. It actually doesn't take too much force. So here I have my kit for the shock. It does bring the oil that you need to replace or the float oil. And then I have an assortment of picks. I have one that's plastic and then I have some metal ones. You have to be super careful when you remove these seals on here that you do not scratch anything. Okay, so I unscrewed the I unscrewed the, the body completely and now okay we pulled the body off. Now we have to clean all that grease in there, in there, and then we'll start removing and replacing seals. So I'm just gonna use some paper towels and wipe all that down real nice. Uh, by the way, you can see the volume spacer in there. It has a pink one, whatever the pink volume is. Let's see if it says, that's what it calls factory. So it's a, I think it says a 0.2 inch. If you wanted to replace that, all you have to do is snap it out, put the new one back in, and then close it back up. So these are the seals we'll be using. These are the seals that are going to be here in the plunger. So we have, they're basically going to be, have this, this rubber seal sandwich between these two plastic seals. These plastic seals are split ring. Okay, so they, they're going to be easy to mount. These are solid and these are going to go on the actual sleeve. This is the dust seal for the bottom and then these three are going to be sandwiched in just inside there. And then we also have the seal. Don't forget about this seal. This is the seal that's in there, the little gasket that's O-ring that's gonna go in here so that when you close it, it makes a, a good seal. All right, so to remove these, we're gonna go in here and let's see if we can find where it's split. There we go. I just kind of press down on it and you can see how it lifts. So I pressed with my fingernail and it lifted. And then if my finger wasn't that slippery, I could, I could grab it. Or you could very carefully grab it with the pick. There we go. Just make sure you don't score any of the aluminum, okay? So you can take it out that way. Same thing with the second one. That's two. Then this one, if you pinch it real good, on the side, <laughs> this little little slipper. I should probably do this with my gloves off. So I took my own advice and took those latex gloves off because then I can grab this seal, just kind of squish it on the side, and then I can grab it very easily with my bare hands or it doesn't slip. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dry that up and clean it up a little better, and then just replace those seals. So I went ahead and put this on the clamp here on my uh, workmate bench to use it just kind of as a, as a third hand and that way I can maneuver a little better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the new rings. Okay, and just make sure that they do seal like they're supposed to. Fox recommends that you put a thin film of slick honey on this. A lot of the videos that I saw don't do that, but uh, Fox actually recommends you put a little film of that. So I used the uh, slick oleum, which is what I had. I didn't have any slick honey to do that. 
but it's the same thing, you know, it's a sh shock seal grease. So that one's there. And then we put the last one. Okay, in there. Yeah, and my hands were kind of in the way, but you get the picture. It's not rocket science. They just snap right in. So that, that seal is done. So now we're going to remove the dust seal on the sleeve here. This will be that seal there. And inside there's also going to be these three rings, very similar to the seals on the other one. For this one, I'm going to use a little plastic pick here. Uh, just make sure I don't, I don't break anything or I'll score anything. I don't want to scratch up that, that sleeve. All right, and here goes the seal. Remove that guy, pops right out. So for the inner sleeve, it, you see the seals there, those three seals, they're gonna be a little hard to get to. I don't wanna scratch anything, so I'm gonna use a kebab pick and see if I can pick those guys out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that was not easy. So what I did is I kept hitting at it on, at, without you know getting to the to the edge so you can see where I grabbed it around the middle of the ring and then just kind of crushed it down away from the metal and at last it came out so that was not easy so just doing that until it finally bent now I can just remove that sucker out the bottom okay now the next one should be easier because now there's space there so I should be able to, <laughs> famous last words, should be able to come here. Again, this is uh, wooden, so it'll, it won't be bad. And I am keep picking at that. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Okay, so finally got it in there. Pick that one out. All right, and I'll do the same for that last one. All right, so finally got all three out. That last one wasn't bad. I just turned the camera off so I could um, get it a little closer to my body and get put some leverage into it. Uh, make sure you clean everything up real well, and then we'll replace it with a new one. So now to install the little seals here, they're going to go in that groove there, and then the dust seal is going to go on the top groove. So we kind of bend them a little bit. All right, this one we're going to coat again with a little bit of either uh, slick honey, in this case slick oleum, or you can actually just use a little bit of the float oil. So this last ring is going to be the hardest one. It has to go on top. So you have the white ring, the rubber ring, and another white ring on top of it. So the black one sandwiched in. There's not a whole lot of space there, so that's going to be the hardest one to put in. So again, just kind of bend it down a little bit like that. Oops, slippery. Like that. Try to get it right in there. Get your finger in there, and then just kind of work it in. Put your finger around it. Make sure everything gets seated in there. And there it is. Now we install the dust seal into its own groove. That one's easy. All right, I got it clamped on the side of my table there. I'm going to take that slick honey, not slick honey, the float oil that comes with the kit. And I'm going to go ahead and it says to just coat all the way around. A little film. All right. And then put a stripe right down the middle. And we're going to take a little bit of the float oil. I went ahead and opened up the valve here and uh, uh, lowered the, the rebound to the lowest setting. I replaced, I have not replaced, woo! I took out the old O-ring and I need to replace it with the new O-ring in here. So now I replaced the O-ring here where it's supposed to be. It's nice and seated where it's, whoops, where it's supposed to be. Coated this, put a little coating on here. The valve, make sure it's wide open. We're gonna slide this here and 
slide the sleeve on. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna put two cc's of that float fluid in the chamber, okay? Now for that, I'm gonna have to put it on the clamp sideways, so of course it doesn't slip out, even though this is very thick. Now the float oil that comes with it, it that's five cc's, so about half of it is gonna go into that chamber. All right, so I put about half of that uh, float oil in the chamber. Now I have to pu push this in, hold the table steady because it moved, <laughs> and push that in there. All right, so now it's all screwed in. I am going to pump that up to, they say, to about 100 PSI. And then I'm going to cycle it through 25% of the travel about 25 times to equalize the pressure on the air chambers and then pump it up to my usual, set my rebound and test it out. So what I did, and I kind of did this off camera, I, I pumped this up to about 50 PSI, put it on my bike and then just compressed about 25% of the travel and just held it there. And you can hear, you're going to hear it. A little hissing noise and that's the pressure equalizing once that sounded like it equalized i pumped it to 100 psi and did the same thing uh, kind of cycled it to 25 percent of travel and again you could hear the psh until the pressure equalized so i'm going to keep pumping it up and i'll keep doing that and make sure that the air between the two chamber equalizes all right so now everything's uh pumped up I set my rebound the way I wanted to, and I set my uh, by PSI to what I wanted it to. That in my case it was around 205 PSI. I'm pretty heavy with all my equipment on, and then now I just have to take it for a ride and see how it works. Again, thanks for watching.